the themes are so important. There's QE, there's Boomer Bus, or this or that. You're going to go back to your Laurence Boone and say, this is what I want you to research. What is it? Uh, basically, we have to get back to productivity. We have to get back to skills. And we basically have to find a way to lower the trade tensions. They are still there. They've already cost us more than 1% of the world's GDP growth. Uh, the, the, the rate of growth of trade went from 5.5% to practically flat. The rate of growth of investment went from 5 6% to flat. Did you voice to this on hell to the President of the United States? Were you able to corner Donald Trump at the espresso bar and say, look, this is the way it is for the OECD, if not for your America? We have said it in so many ways, written it, we've insisted, we published it, and basically saying the trade tensions are causing disruption. Why? Because they're causing uncertainty. Uncertainty kills investment. Investment, of course, is the seed of the growth of tomorrow. So basically, by, by creating the trade tensions, you... Uh, kill the investment, you kill the growth. How much this of, is what has happened. How much of a headache is this? Does the U.S., and in particular, does the U.S. administration think that actually tariffs work? And will they use them against Europe? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I hope that they don't use them against Europe. And I think there's, when there's a will, there's a way. And yesterday, we found a way. The French uh, agreed to defer the action on their digital taxation law, and the Americans agreed to defer the actions on their 301, uh, you know, potentially the sanctions, etc., uh, because it was not just a question against French champagne or French wine. It was a European right. against the United States issue, eventually. So, and what happened? They both agreed that they would give multilateral solutions a chance. That means to the OECD, the mandate to work on a final solution on digital taxation. So but Europe can't come together. So how can the OECD come together on this? Well, because we have 137 countries working on this solution, not just Europe. Yeah. And by that the way, like a nightmare. we had pretty strong support from practically every European country. And the U.S. have been participating rather enthusiastically. Why? Because there are a number of elements of the package that we're proposing on digital taxation that are very akin to the, uh, to the tax reform that was uh, done in the United States a couple of years ago. So you think you'll be able to broker a deal the, in, in, in the time that has, is... Francine, the, think of the option. Instead of a multilateral solution, which everybody will embrace, and they're all willing to sunset their yeah. own domestic laws and come to the multilateral solution, imagine 45... 50, whatever, different legislations with different uh, types of taxes, etc. And remember, Europe is not uh, on taxes. It's not Europe, Brussels, meaning the European Commission. Every, it's every country uh, on its own. So I think that the alternative is so disruptive that they will all be trying very hard to get a deal. Within the, bu the bureaucracy of the OECD, do you have a mercantile division? I mean, are we back to mercantilism here? Every, every nation <laughs> We have for a itself? trade uh, division. Uh, we have a trade directorate, and we also have a director that deals with uh, enterprise and financial affairs. So yes, the answer is yes. But where's the, you're the great student of this. You taught at Monterey years ago. This is really important. Are we back to not multilateral? Not back to bilateral, trilateral. Are we back to a mercantilistic every nation for itself? That's what I heard from the president when he gave that press conference here. How are we going to deal with things like international trade, if not multilaterally? How are we going to deal with international investment flows, if not multilaterally? How do we deal with migration flows, if not multilaterally? How do you deal with things like climate change? Are you, pre not are you predicting that the President of the United States policies will impinge on U.S. Multi uh, multinational investment? Is he going to limit the investment of Johnson & Johnson abroad? It is already having an impact, lowering the rate of growth of the United States, just like it is having an impact on China. So already we know the cost of uh, these trade tensions. Uh, they impinge directly on uh, the well. Uh, they create uncertainty. They create, they create, uh, you know, uh, lower growth. They create lower jobs. So 
if we know the consequences, you know, and we know that there are better options, let's go in that direction. But have we reached peak multilateralism? Does it just go down from here? No, uh, you never reach peak multilateralism. Actually, I would say that today uh, we have to uh, defend multilateralism. We have to prove that this is the way, because otherwise uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure against multilateralism. There already is, and uh, we're trying to push it back.